What is good? We are back. Just with two. One, two, no uh, no three. So the tripod is not intact for this week's edition of the FF Dynasty. How you doing, Jay Wayne? You know, I like I like a third, but I, I can do just two, you know? Yeah. Used to just two, but we can incorporate a third. I like that. Uh, today, we're going to get into a little bit of Leonard Fournette action. He's been on fire up in here. Oh, Lenny? Lloyd Banks. We're already getting to the Lenny? I mean... You might as well. No reason to just beat around the bush here. Big Co's not here. You're here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm fine. You're fine. Everybody's fine. Let's roll. What do we What do we got to lose here? I mean, except for the fact that, you know, I hope you're thriving at this point. I hope that you're I just hit the Lenny button. Whatever, that's fine. You can hit him with the You can hit him with the graphic <laughs> later. But I hope you're thriving. We're sponsored by uh, Thrive Fantasy. Uh, you got a little promo code, the FFD. The that'll, that'll help FFD. you out at, at, at checkout there. You can go to any app store and download Thrive Fantasy. It's a player prop and player prop tournament site. It's also some esports involved in there. It's super fun. It's super easy. We wouldn't be plugging uh, a product that we didn't enjoy and play ourselves each week. You know, it's top 20 guys in the tournament, top 20 like fantasy players, big time guys where you bet on player props whether it's completions yards uh touchdowns, all, all, touchdowns or receptions, receptions or, or just rushing yards or just receiving yards or all-purpose yards all those kind of things it's really fun we've had a lot of fun playing it um so go down download that have some have some fun take it easy it's nothing crazy you don't have to get super in depth with like you know players like you know what's daryl mooney gonna do today and what's uh darnell, darnell. whatever what's um something give me another uh you know what's K, KJ? Do I got to start KJ Osborne today? Like, no. You just gotta you gotta tell me whether or not um, Josh Jacobs is gonna have over sixty one all purpose yards. But if I'm looking for a flex and the over under for KJ Osborne receptions is like six, I'm gonna that, that I'm gonna be like, okay, well they think he's gonna get. Six or if it's like 50 yards or something, they think he's gonna get that much because of the projected points and whatever the Vegas is. S- magic way of figuring out what the perfect over under number is if that's high enough then i feel better about starting them i like so, the little twist of using the site yeah well you'd, you probably wouldn't use thrive again for the kj uh osborne you'd probably have to go to a different Fair. site to find that uh it's for it's for yeah, the bigger it's guys for the top guys but nobody cares about kj osborne that is a nice little thing that you could do if you're struggling to figure out who you should start or who you shouldn't start. Maybe look at some player props and over unders, over under, see what they got and look at all the things and see kind of how that weighs out and see if that weighs into your confirmation bias or not. But use that code. Uh, They'll match you up to a hundred bucks free monies. Let's go do it. Okay. Leonard Fortnite. What do you got for me? Ace. He's on fuego or he's in fuego on fire. Wiling out. So we were like watching him play last Thursday and we were like, that guy needs a video. So then we began searching for the angle, right? How are we going to make this video? Because can't just come on here and be like, oh, Leonard Fournette looks like old Lenny. He looks like the Lenny you drafted coming out of college. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people are looking for running backs right now. Mm hmm. A lot of people are in or out of contention. You might have a losing record already know. Mm, probably not going to work out for me this year. We're six weeks in. You might know already. Yeah, 0-6, 1-5. Right. Two, lucky 2-4. Two and four. If, if Maybe if you've scored near the top three or four in the league and you're 1-5, and five, maybe you could still consider yourself to have a, have a chance, one, game, one more game. But for the most part, starting to figure out who's in, who's out. Right. So just wanted to look at Leonard Fournette and maybe what you should do with him. It's a good literal buy, sell, hold kind of guy because I could see buying or selling Lenny right now. Right. And definitely holding. It's much like just about any fantasy player right now outside of, you know, probably the the younger rookies that everybody likes and, and, and the young studs. Whereas depending on what side of your fence you're on and the context that you're in and the league that you're in and what's context where your team's at. 
you know, would you, should you be buying or selling Leonard Fournette? It's pretty easy to get on here and just be like, oh, you got to sell him. You got to sell him. You're getting a resurgence and who knows if the value is going to last. Who knows what's going to happen? Yada, yada, yada. got to sell. But, you know, or you're like, oh, money's crushing right now. You just got to come on here and you got to buy. And it's like, well, contextually, like it's basically like, well, which way is your franchise going and how are you feeling? How much risk do you want to take and how badly do you need it? And how confident are you in right. Leonard Fournette? Right. Well, let's let's see how confident we are. Let's look at all. Let's look at what we can look at. Okay. So he's seemed to have grabbed control over this backfield. He's. I was reading some PFF article. He basically Ronald Jones only came in in the last couple games to give Lenny a breather. Yep. They're struggling to get Gio on the field because he's working so well on third downs. And Gio's had some injuries. Um, so, so Lenny's, Lenny's, I mean, he's only, he is still only playing about 62% of the snaps, but it's, it's, it's a lot of snaps. This team is, is going on. Like he's eighth in the league in RB snaps mm-hmm. and you know, they're on the field a ton. So there's a lot of opportunity for Lenny and we'll get into some of the numbers of what he's actually doing, but just, just to see him go from being a guy that got cut by Jacksonville, almost got cut by Tampa Bay. Right. Has like this attitude change, right? He's always been the man at, at LSU. He was the man. Everybody wanted to see him. Everything revolved around him. That's what he thought was going to happen in Jacksonville. And that's what he probably continued to think going into Tampa Bay. And Bruce Arians well, sat him down. It sort of did for a minute in Jacksonville there with the Bordelais and the playoff run and, and the defense being great. And then whatever happened, happened in Jacksonville. Things fell apart. And, you know, just a gets weird cut. weird situation and, and gets cut for an undrafted free agent, I believe, um, and James Robinson. And, you know, after coming off of a 2019 season that was real strong uh, for Lenny Fournette as far as production and carries and all, everything above, Lenny was, was pretty solid in, in 2019. And then right right before the season starts, he gets cut. It's a huge bummer. Um, And, you know, you see him kind of get picked up. There's some mixed usage all the way in that Tampa Bay from the time he gets picked up until, you know, like you said, if you watch that broadcast last week, you saw um, them kind of break it down and talk about like, hey, week 14 of the season last year, they basically sat Rojo down or yeah, Rojo. They've sat Leonard Fournette down and said, hey, man, like. You can either get your shit together or get out. Like we're, we're going to get rid of you. We're going to cut you. You got to. So he needed to. Right. Do you, you want to buy in or not? Right. So he needed to reevaluate and said kind of some of the things that you did. He's always been the man and and needed to just realize that he was part of a team and something bigger and and you know has a chance to do something special here and you know seemingly that transformed into uh, playoff Lenny. And now Lombardi Lenny, and then now we're in regular season Uncle Lenny over here, and Uncle Lenny is just back to to form, bought in, being unselfish, not being a dickhead. You saw in the Eagles game, and even in that game, that taunting penalty that cost the Eagles mm. maybe a chance to do something. Old Lenny would have headbunted that man mm-hmm. as soon as he got up and started popping shit. Instead, he had himself enough together to realize to start pointing at him and going smiling basically and being like, yo, 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 this dude's fucking up right here at a pivotal part of the game. On Aren't y'all concerned about this shit this year for no fucking right. reason? That we're having what you want to get flags. They love the, the key phrase of point. They're having the point of emphasis on this. Like, look, yo, 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 yo. Um, so stupid, by the way, this so is ridiculous. No whether no that's here or there, right. Lenny, Lenny knew what it was and knew the, the situation and where he was and didn't let it get, you know, too not big only for didn't him. let him get susceptible to it, but right. drew the fucking penalty on the other guy. Right. So, just a huge shift in 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 the humans being's mindset, uh, seemingly for Leonard Fournette here, and it and it's made basically all the difference because the talent was never an issue. It was it was how how much do you want it? Who do you want to be? What do you want to be remembered as? And and right now, it's it's Lenny. Uh, kind of figuring out and buying into what Tampa's doing and it's it's showing on the field when you're watching the game and then it's showing up in, in your fantasy stats right. week in, week out. And so. then another point to how he's kind of matured, if you watch the end of that game, he had the interview with Aaron Andrews, which I'm sure she was like, dang it, I wanted to talk to Tommy, but I guess I have to talk to Lombardo Lenny here. 
And she was asking him about how, you know, how do you feel and his performance and all this stuff. And everything that he said was about the team, the offensive line, the unit, the, the fact that they've been together for two years now and they're just getting better and, and the leader that Tommy is. And, and he just shifted all attention and, and praise away from him and to the unit and to the cohesion and to the line and to the right. quarterback. It was just like. Thank you, Lenny. Like this is what like you didn't. Need, you're almost. It's almost too much. You know. Like, give yourself some credit. But yeah. you know, he's talked to a publicist. He's got his shit together, and he's saying the right things, and he's doing the right things, and it's definitely working out on the field. And you know, furthermore, I mean, and I got some straight facts and stats um, for you. If you know, he's in a one year deal, and he. Yep. Needs, we don't really know how it's going to end, but he's probably gonna add his last chance for maybe a decent payday and we'll see how he kind of feels and what he's what he's thinking and how this whole tampa thing goes but i mean we're jumping ahead let's, know, let's well i'm just i'm just saying like motivation for him to be getting his shit together and playing well is you know when you're hungry for that next contract is is a reason to be playing at the level where he's playing right to get your mind right and do everything you can to try and get that next payday and we'll, we'll get into speculating on the long-term deal here w with Lenny, but just to reflect on what he's done, let's take it to some straight facts. Straight some, facts, uh, baby. Let's just go. Just keeping it 100 here. So look at look at what Lenny's doing this year. He's RB11, and that's with a fairly little, little bit of a slow start, coming on strong. O October ADP on D11, he's at 117. That's going up for sure. He's eighth in snaps. I mentioned that. They run so many damn plays, and they do so, many, so much short stuff. He's just crushing snaps on the field, so that's great. Evaded tackles. He's got 27 of them. That ties him for 14th. The other guys that are tied with him are Najee Harris, Alvin Kamara, and Javante Williams. Thought that was an interesting list of guys mm -hmm. that have 27 evaded tackles. Indeed. 11th, though, in yards created, so he's popping off long runs after evading these tackles. Yards created are counted after basically first initial contact. 293, good for 11th. And then the drops. Here's the thing. He's getting smarter. He's making less mistakes on the field. Now, I have an asterisk there next to the zero because if you look at fantasy data, they chart him with one drop. If you look at PFF... I'm pretty sure I saw the drop. Zero drops for PFF. Pretty sure he has a drop. PFF gave him the pass. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but even regardless, zero drops, one drop. He's uh, just so many receptions. He's got 25 receptions thus far, three or more catches in every single game, and he's averaging 4.2 recep receiving uh, receptions a game. So the PPR floor has been there the entire time. And then he just scored two touchdowns, and he's getting the lion's share of the carries, still getting PPR points. Like Lenny, looking like a league winner for what you paid for him right now. Could be potentially, like you said. I mean, whether that's dynasty or redraft. He's uh, a bonus that he doesn't have to face the Tampa defense ever. Yeah. Um, that's fair. And then, Except in practice every and day. then, like you said, the first three weeks, as far as usage on the field and snaps and uh, attempts, you know, fairly low, especially on the week three lull here at six point four uh, against the Rams, where they, you know, got they got jumped on and and um, they got out on them early. Um, but you still um, hit the receptions, like you said, the targets have been kind of in the beginning of the season, holding it together a little bit for him. And now you see the usage and, and the touchdowns and all those things kind of creep back up here through week four or five and six. And now you got, you know, you got to fire him up every week. You got Tom That's with a sure. little, a little thumb issue right now. So I could see them boys riding him into the bye for sure. Um, and giving him, you know, 12 or uh, 15 to 20 attempts a game or, or at least 15 to 20 um, touches. touches a game and until we can get maybe into this buy and get Tommy Stum a little time to, to heal there because, you know. He banged it against – he banged it during that game. They said something about it. And, I, like, Big Coast trying to trade me Tom Brady. And the announcers are like, oh, he's got this slow injury. And I was like, I can't make a trade with Big Co. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number one in Dynasty, don't make a trade with Big Co. <laughs> Although he doesn't win them all the time, he's got bad fantasy karma. But it is maybe what I it should is. entertain it. Uh, so, right, he's been crushing it this year. And if you have him on your dynasty team, for whatever reason, whether you bought him in a startup or you've had him for a little while, he's finally paying off for you. He's going to help you win some games. I'm excited to fire him up 
every week. The last three weeks he's been on a tear, completely taking control of this, this backfield. And I'm ready to just fire him up. But the question is, like, if you're in Dynasty, you know, what do you do? Because there is a bit of a question mark. He's, 20, he's 26. He'll be 27 in January, right? And he's on the one-year deal, so there's no guarantee he'll be a buck next year. And I could see the Bucks winning a Super Bowl, trying to fill it up again, bringing back as many pieces as they can, but he already gave him a one-year kind of deal, deal, where he, where he paid on it, plays, he's playing on an incentive-laden deal where he can make up the $4 million if he reaches certain incentives. I don't know that he would fill it back up for one year. This is his, we said it before earlier on the show, this is his last right. chance to get a bigger payday. You know, I don't know if the Bucks have the capital to pay him seven, eight, nine, ten dollars, ten million dollars a year for two to three years. I don't know what he right. can get. I don't. I don't think he can get that much. So, I guess maybe the only saving grace, potentially, they, they've brought a lot of people back. They, the Godwin's on a franchise deal. They, they've basically brought everybody back, which is why everybody likes Tampa this year a good bit. Tom's no stranger to taking less money to figure things out. Um, he's made $27 million from the Jaguars deal. And then um, I think he made $2 million from Tampa last year and then potentially another four this year. So, I mean, certainly has plenty of money for any normal human. Um, but, you know, Go get your money, you should bud. probably get it if get you can. your fucking money, Lenny. So, uh, But the only saving grace, I think, is the fact that maybe that – both Rojo and him are free agents after this year. And maybe if Tom comes back for another year or two, maybe they say, hey, let's let's not break this up. Let's figure out a way to give, you know, him, uh, you know, six million, seven million a year or something for the next two years. Right. Um, so that way we keep this intact. We don't have to bring a new running back in. So you're telling um, me there's a chance he's still a buck next maybe. year? Maybe. Well, you know, Keyshawn Vaughn's still there. So <laughs> who? <laughs> Where's that guy that was? Where's the Keyshawn Vaughn lover who hated us and gave us thumbs down and said, oh, Keyshawn Vaughn. I'm know, pretty sure he owes us a bet of some sort. You yeah. made a bet with him somewhere. Yeah. I, I think he's supposed I'm to make a video about how much he loves Pretty sure uh, he's Ro- never Ronald paid up Jones. on that. Yeah. He doesn't make videos. There was a penny guy, too. All I wanted him to say penny. was that he, lo- that he hated Ronald Jones. That's all I wanted him to say. Just say you hate Ronald Jones. That's what this whole Keyshawn Vaughn thing's about is you hate Ronald Jones. And he <laughs> wouldn't admit it. Then Lenny came in and really just and ruined it's everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, st- I'm still on a Ronald. He could go somewhere. Yeah, Ronald's still super still young. Still young. Let just, me get some cheap Ronald it's just Jones. just a tough anyway. doghouse over there in, in Tampa Bay. And is that does that scare you? You think Lenny has a longer leash from the success he's had on the field now? So you think he's still at, at, at risk of getting fucking yanked at any so that's point? something that you, you could be concerned about, I guess. I mean, it seems like Lenny has the the uh, control of this offense of the, of the of the backfield but it seems like for whatever reason Bruce, Bruce is a dick to running he hates Bruce running Bruce really keeps you on a short leash and and maybe maybe Lenny's got a little uh what's the word I'm looking for uh R- trust uh trust or something what's built up like a little um to trust <laughs> not yeah not sure tr- there's there's another word I'm looking for but we'll go with trust has a little trust built up and you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's getting the nod from Tom, and Tom just likes him, and so. But there has I he's feel, looking if, swift and if quick he, and if busting he fucks tackles up a couple of times and a, and a fumble here or there. I feel like you could it could you know even back out with a little rojo. It just I haven't had. I don't know. It, it concerns me a little bit. But how good he's playing and how good he looks and seems focused and seems all about what's going on, I guess doesn't give me as much pause as it would have say last year. Um, okay. All right. Well, given given everything we've talked about, we hashed it out. Let's uh, let's see. Let's let's discuss some trade potentials here, right? Because I don't want to just be like, well, if your if your team sucks, trade Lenny away. If your team's good, trade yeah. for Lenny. He's in the Tommy Trust tree. So, are you gonna give up a first for Lenny? Uh, no. Not giving up the first. No. If somebody wanted to pay me a first, I'd probably have to take it. What if you had to give Lenny in a second to get the first? You still do that? Probably so. Regardless of your team makeup, firsts are not coming in to play here. Based uh, on yeah, age I mean, and contract. I guess if I really needed Lenny and I felt like he was a key factor of me winning, then I guess I could be okay with... Because I would sell the get, first... Give the first, get the second back and Lenny? Uh, 
Well, I'm I'm just saying in general, like to even talk about this trade, like I would sell a first to get a player that would help me try to lock into a championship or build, uh, you know, uh, some depth on the roster or be a decent another <laughs> flex starter for my team. So, you know, maybe I don't really consider that trade if I'm ready to win necessarily, but I could also see just take, just t- taking Lenny on a second to get the first. Okay. All right. What uh, would you trade? So I saw this trade go down a first and a second for Leonard Fournette and Josh Jacobs. I'll do that all day. I mean, I think that's a no brainer. I think you're pretty much see you picks. Let me get these two RBs. I mean, I, Josh Jacobs, healthy playing all season, uh, you know, coming on strong. I like Josh Jacobs as a trade target right now. Yeah, we've talked about that in the past. Uh, yeah, that's for sure, because in a couple of weeks, it could be a first and a second just for, just Jacobs. for Josh Jacobs. I mean, yep, it's just and before the season, you know, I don't know if you in the off season, I don't think you could have traded a first and a second and got Jacobs or at least it would have taken, you know, some more negotiating, I think. Would you trade Darnell Mooney in a second to get Lenny? If yeah, he needed some RD, RB depth. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. So second and a and a, and a throw in player all day. Right, and Mooney's kind of in that. Like it seems Fringe. like it seems like Mooney and Fields are going to develop some chemistry. They seem like they're they're kind of locked into each other. I don't How know what's going to happen with A Rob. Yeah, but I'm saying down the line, I don't. Yeah. I don't think A Rob may not be there for for long. Poor A Rob, um, man. So. Mooney would be a guy that I'd be kind of targeting to put on a team. Um, but if you're going to, if, if, if right now, if I had Mooney in a second and was ready to compete and go try and, and try to add a piece to win, then sure. I, I would trade that for a second or I'd trade that for Lenny. Would you rather have James Robinson or Leonard Fournette? Uh, James Robinson. Would you rather have Chase Edmonds or Leonard Fournette? Probably Chase Edmonds. Really? Mm-hmm. Why is that? I think I'm leaning Fournette. Uh, just because just chase They're both unrestricted free agents next year chase as people like to point out is this near the top in like every efficiency metric and is can can kind of do everything i could see chase being brought back to the cardinals because he fits he fits in with what's going on he's like a year and um, two months younger than the Lenny. touchdowns haven't quite come yet for chase edmonds but i think they would come well, he's getting banged up right um, now he is, they're he limiting is a, him he is a little banged up right now so you know sure but i i think i like Chase Edmonds and potentially Chase Edmonds' long-term ability of being effective for a long period of time, um, as far as things go. So give me, I, I think give I would, me Lenny. I think I would lean Chase Edmonds there. I'll take um, Lenny. All right. So let's say you have Lenny and and you're not you you want to get rid of him. What I would be trying to do is target some younger dudes, like some wide receivers uh, that, that that aren't like crushing it. If I could go, would you trade Lenny for Elijah Mitchell? I know I just uh, said wide receivers, but yeah, well, probably so. What about Elijah Moore? Uh, yeah, I guess probably so. This is because public reception of Lenny, not great. Public yeah. reception of Elijah Moore, everyone likes him, everyone loves him, they're in love with him. Can't wait for him um, to be good. Nobody's he really is, even in like with Lenny, people. except for people who have him and are starting him right now. Um, so I, I guess I would again. You know, if if I'm if I'm not winning, then I would trade Leonard Fournette for Elijah Moore. Yeah, I, I guess so. What about Pittman? Uh, yeah, uh, these are all not winning scenarios. I guess, or maybe you just maybe you don't you're not needing Lenny, and you know if you I'm might lo- be, if you I'm might loaded be at, if I'm loaded at running back, then Which yeah, no I, loaded I would at running back, but I mean. <clears throat> I was you could pretty be, loaded at running back in some in some leagues, and it's it's gone it's gone down to just be having two to start. But Lenny for Pittman, I think I think I think you should. I would pull the trigger on Pittman. I think. Yeah, even if you. Yeah, I would pull the trip on. Regardless, yes, I would. Yes, yes, I think I would do that. Um, let's see, Visca in a second for for Lenny. Yeah, probably so. I I, I believe in the talent of Visca. I, I love Visca Chanel. I just. I don't know what the hell's going on over there in Jacksonville. It seemed like this last game. He needs to get his shit together. He's not catching the ball. Right. Really fucking pissing me off. It also seems like just in the little bit of interviews and the little bit of things I've seen with Visca, Chenault, like maybe his mental isn't quite where it needs to be, and he doesn't care as much as he should about being great. Hmm. And he stayed, 
stayed a little nicked here and there, which, you know, I'm not going to knock a guy for that. Just a lot yet. of injuries um, coming out of college. But Biggest knock on him coming out. Lenny's been – Lenny's had the ankle for, for a while, so it's not an issue right now. But, you know, so Visca in a second. Yeah, I guess if, if I'm not – especially if I'm not winning – we're looking to win this year, then yeah, I would I would do that deal. All and right. I'm not saying I'm necessarily scared of Leonard Fournette next year, but I'm just saying like you know Pittman could be a a guy who if he if him and Wentz develop some chemistry, which it looks like they they sort of are a little bit, um, he could be fantastic. And I think he's right now you can't get Pittman for less than a first round pick. I don't think um, Lavisca Chenault's probably just the way people view fantasy in a hole hasn't really produced for you. So there's probably some mad Visca owners, which is why there's probably a second added to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and somebody who needed the running back, which is what well, these, these are deals that got done. Um, I'm assuming. Um, so yeah, I can kind of see that, but I like the talent of Visca and if him and Trevor can kind of get together and, and this, the Jaguars team can continue to build on what we saw this past week. And Trevor seems to be getting more and more confident and, and, after those first couple of weeks of turnover late in football, it seems like he's really, you know, kind of clamped down on that a little bit and figured out that this is in college. Windows are smaller. You can't make these uh, errors and uh, seems to be growing in the right direction and it seems like he could be something great like we expected him to be. Um, so, yeah, I, that, that would be fine with me, too. OK, well, I mean. If I'm in the mix, maybe I'm not the best or the worst, but if I have Lenny, I'm probably holding for now because I would imagine that value will continue to go up. I'm going to bet on Lenny. Yeah. I mean, I got a team that had Lenny was not starting. Right. And I have Swift, Gibson, and Montgomery. And now all of a sudden, Lenny is absolutely in my life. There's nothing I could do. Nothing that I can really do about it. You, I mean, shit, even if... Well, that's what I was about to say. Even now, at this point, even if I had those two guys and was feeling really good about them being healthy, I'd probably still be playing all four of those running backs and then just starting uh, two receivers, uh, which would be, in that case, that's probably the best Devontae kind of Adams lead. and don't let me, Mike don't make Don't make me start three wide receivers. Give me an extra flex. Right. So, yeah, I mean... Lenny, Lenny's great. I, I don't mind going to try to trade for him right now, but I mean, you gave me a lot of different scenarios where I was probably more apt to trade him away, but I think he's going to be good. And, and I, I feel like there's probably another good season or two in him now that maybe the mental is, is there. Um, two twos, two, two twos. I would, I'd trade two twos for him uh, yeah. to get him to yeah. acquire him. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Two twos. I think someone could put that together, a 22-2 and a 23-2. Boom. Go get you a, 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 a league winning and, and somebody back, probably is seeing, hey, I'm getting, you know, it just depends on how your league is, who has them. And, right. You know, somebody's has- seeing that they got an asset that they were upset about and was kind of dead and all, unstartable necessarily week in, week out to an asset that might be startable and, and maybe you can sell them. And maybe that's the absolute it's right choice. But I, I, I personally believe that he is taking a step in the right direction. And the and talent's there be, on the field. He's right. evading tackles. He's busting off long runs. He's catching, catching balls. balls. Right. He's getting thrown balls and catching them. Like right. he, getting a bunch of snaps. Like there's this is everything you want from a starting running yeah. back on your I, I didn't mean team. to seem like I was out on him. Those are just good deals yeah. to go the other way that seem a little safer long term. But I mean and we're talking dynasty so if I, we're if we're I got no problem figuring out a way to acquire Lenny right now and seeing what the market will bear on him. So, All right. Well, you got anything else? I don't think so. Well, appreciate you guys hanging with us. If you made it this far, definitely hit me with that subby, scribey, notey comment. <laughs> can't, can't shorten comment. <laughs> Mints. And, uh, you know, hit the Thrive, the thrivefantasy.com, the FFD. Tell me, boys, sent you. And if you got a Lenny trade, let us know. Hit us up. So yeah. If you saw one or traded for one or or are thinking about sending one, hit the comment section. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>